Pro Playmakers. These are the skills that separate. Welcome to Playmakers blog number 14, the crossover versus the V-Start debate. Well, for me, it's not much of a debate. I'm a big proponent of the crossover start. I think that the V-Start is irrelevant in today's game, and I think that there's very few, if any, real game applications to it. So I struggle with the amount of time that's afforded and given to the development of the V-Start and the lack of time that's afforded and developed for the for the crossover start when the crossover start and the use of crossovers in a real game is so much more prevalent and so much more relevant. So let me show you what I mean and give you a good, some good examples of how the V start is really irrelevant. And that is like let's say you have players skating uh, up the ice in the neutral zone and all of a sudden the puck changes direction. And the player is, it's a short movement to get to the wall. And my argument is, is that in any game that you watch in the National Hockey League or any level for that matter, player's natural reaction is going to be to put on a break and then cross their feet to get to the new direction. And the reason why is because they're already facing this direction. But they want to go in that direction. So in order for them to do that, they're going to stop, and to do a V-start, they'd have to stop with both feet, and then turn their shoulders, and then get into this V, and then move. And to me, it's just not practical, and it's not relevant in today's game. The other issue with efficiency is, is and where the V-start is used the most, where it's not even in a start, it's in a restart. So what that means is a player's moving, he's accelerated from, say, here to here, now he needs to read the play, so he gets his feet apart, and he's resting and moving. And as he's moving, he sees an opportunity to accelerate. And he's going to accelerate to a loose puck, accelerate to forecheck, accelerate to get the pass, wherever it is that he's going to accelerate. So now he's going to accelerate here. In order to accelerate from there, a player that uses a V start puts himself at an efficiency disadvantage. A player who's going to use a crossover is going to cover a lot more distance in a shorter amount of time. So that is really the definition of speed, is distance, a large distance in a shorter amount of time. So if I can cross my feet and gain the distance and shorten the time, I'm way ahead. Where another player, in order to cover that same distance using the V on a restart, they're going to have to use more steps to get where the, where the, to the same place that I want to go with a crossover. The other thing that I've noticed in my studies of players as they're skating and in our preparation for them when they come to see us in the off season to work on their skating is players who typically skate in straight lines or use the V as a start or a restart situation, they tend to be higher. They tend to skate with their center of gravity much, much higher and they tend to use more steps than those people who are uh, crossover oriented people. So that's the biggest thing with efficiency is you want to be able to get to where you want to go with less steps and get there with more speed. So when, now we've been talking about efficiency and skating efficiency and getting there in less steps with more speed and that's the hockey benefit. We haven't really talked about the effect that it has on your hips to be such a linear skater. So a skater that's using V's all the time and skating in straight lines, the stress that you're putting on your hips is, is, is monumental and, and it's becoming more and more of a problem as you see players with a lot of groin injuries, a lot of hip flexor injuries, a lot of problems with their lower stomach. Those issues are, a lot of it can be attributed to the repetitive movements of going in straight lines without being able to build the momentum and that's the one thing that the crossover does better than any other stride is that it allows you allows a player to build momentum and that momentum that can carry them in a larger amount of distance is also friendly with the hips one thing that you'll notice when you watch really top-end NHL players is the, the skating patterns in which they use. So when they're in acceleration, what are the patterns in which they use? One of the patterns which really hurts if you're a V-start or a V uh, restart type of player is the re-excel pattern. So what that means is, is that when the player is accelerating, so let's say they're starting here as the weak side winger and now they're going to accelerate up the ice. If they use a V start, 
it'll encourage them to stay in a straight line the entire time. So they go, you know, how they, they, they talk about getting high, you do your three steps, and then you settle down into this long, drawn-out stride. Problem is players, especially the top players, they don't take any more than two or three straight line strides at any one time. Maybe three, that's about it. For the most part, it's crossover, couple straight strides, crossover, a linear crossover, couple straight strides, linear crossover, and that's what's really replaced these V's. And especially on the Reexcel is the linear crossover. And that's a new way of, of, of skating and the new patterning because the game is so dynamic. At very few times you can be skating in a dead straight line. For the most part, you're going to be playing in a more curvilinear pattern. And that requires a lot more crossover. So the sooner you as a player can either learn to cross your feet as your initial crossover. Like I don't let anybody have a V start at any point on my ice. There's no V starts. No V starts, no re-excel V starts. Everything is based on a crossover. One of the interesting things that really proves the point is we run into a lot of players who are straight line players, especially at the NHL level, and they're trying to get to the next level with their skating efficiency. So from blue line to blue line, they'll take 10, 12, 14 steps. When really, if they threw a linear crossover there, I could drop that down to four. So instead of going 10 steps, 12 steps between the blue lines, I can drop that down to four or five, and when I do that, the efficiency of the player and their energy level when they get where they want to go is so much higher.